This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. It's dropout day, the day after Super Tuesday, the day when candidates take stock of their positions and decide what to do going forward. Usually, a presumptive nominee starts to emerge from the challenging political party, but not this year. The GOP has an incumbent and presumptive nominee, yes, but the Democratic Party has the makings of a nasty internal fight on their hands. Hmm, I think it's time for a hump day roasted opinion. Before the first primary contest in Iowa, there are a lot of people, typically, who are declaring their candidacy for president. And before those caucuses, the endless campaigning in Iowa and New Hampshire convinces most of them that they aren't really as popular as they might think, especially outside of their constituency. Between the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primaries, the remaining candidates divide into three groups. Solid candidates, surprise candidates, and stubborn candidates. Solid candidates typically have a solid finish in Iowa. Surprise candidates finished far better than expected in Iowa, and stubborn candidates are counting on finishing better in later contests. New Hampshire then shows which is which. Solid candidates keep finishing solid, surprise candidates surge in the polls and drop just as fast, and stubborn candidates continue to campaign despite the results. This process repeats again in South Carolina. And as the bounces disappear, the surprise candidates drop out one by one. By Super Tuesday, though, there are typically two or maybe three solid candidates left and a few others who haven't seen the writing on the wall yet. And by the time the votes are tallied, only the solid candidates remain. This election in the Democratic Party, we have two solid candidates. Bernie Sanders put together an early lead in early states while Joe Biden finally showed up in South Carolina which left Super Tuesday divided between them. Biden won more states, but Bernie won California, the biggest prize in the primary season. Mike Bloomberg bet everything on Super Tuesday and has effectively paid the most per delegate of any candidate for little results. Elizabeth Warren finished third in her own home state, yet vows to fight on. Or at least she did last night. Tulsi Gabbard finally won a delegate in American Samoa and hasn't announced her next move yet. Now, these results are likely due to the fact that every candidate who has dropped out seems to be endorsing Joe Biden. For that matter, every mover and shaker in the Democratic Party also seems to be endorsing Joe Biden. This is despite the fact that Joe sniffs hair and gives awkward, creepy hugs and kisses to people. It's also despite the fact that Joe seems to be forgetting more and more fairly important details every day, like what office he's running for or how senators are chosen or how many people live in the U.S., or even which woman is his wife and which one is his sister. And yet, Biden picked up solid finishes and possibly the biggest haul of delegates on Super Tuesday. And why? Because, despite his Democratic Socialist street cred, Bernie Sanders is as cuddly as a cactus. His record shows that he doesn't compromise, not even to get elected. Because in Bernie's world, he is right. He is always right and the only person in America who can solve problems, including problems which aren't actually problems outside of Bernie's world. For my UK audience, Bernie probably sounds a lot like Jeremy Corbyn. That's a fairly accurate impression, more or less. Both promise to solve every problem with more government spending, and neither can explain how they will pay for said expenditures in the long term. Both have a history of praising socialist dictators. The only difference between them, really, is their facial hair. Back to Bernie, though. Sanders isn't going to make deals with the DNC, especially not after they threw his campaign under the bus in 2016. That means that Bernie's real chance is if he can win the nomination on the first ballot, before the superdelegates can vote. Unfortunately for Bernie, that also means that he's unlikely to do a deal with any of the other candidates, apart from possibly Elizabeth Warren which is why the dropped-out candidates so far have all endorsed Biden. And after Super Tuesday, it looks more like Bernie will score a plurality of delegates at best, and roughly the same number as Biden. This creates the potential for a brokered convention, 
and just that potential could fracture the Democratic Party. Bernie Sanders pointed out on MSNBC back on February 12th that it would be very divisive if the candidate with a plurality of delegates doesn't get the nomination. Hugh Hillary Clinton, who responded by saying that the convention has rules, that the DNC should follow the rules, and that the Sanders campaign was just baloney. Interesting thing is that she responded to his statement from nearly three weeks ago, Tuesday morning, on Good Morning America, right about the time that voters were preparing to head to the precincts in Super Tuesday states. Hashtag she persisted in being bitter about 2016, I see. Their statements highlight that divide I mentioned. The progressive left and the more moderate established Democrats are at odds with each other. So here we are. Sanders has the youth vote and the Hispanic vote. Biden has the African-American vote and the establishment vote. Bloomberg has dropped out and endorsed Biden. Warren is deciding what to do next. That's probably complicated for her, considering the fact that she has in the past been at loggerheads with both Sanders and Biden. Gabbard has yet to figure out that discretion is the better part of valor. And the American voters have to figure out what they want in their Democratic nominee. Democratic socialism or demented senility? There's still a lot of primary season to go, folks. Don't assume that one of the two frontrunners is the presumptive nominee yet.